Well, we still have a, a minute before we officially start. Let me tell you a little bit about kind of my mindset for how I manage the relationship with suppliers. Uh, we call it the three circle framework. And the three, the three circles that overlap, you have the relationship. You always hear how important it is to build a relationship with the supplier. Then there's the contractual, the documentation. And then finally we have the, um, I guess what I could call monitoring. So you need all three of these. You need to have the relationship, you need to have a, a documented um, way of doing business, and then you need to monitor it. Now, regardless if we're talking quality control or contracts, you know, with quality control you would want a specification sheet, that's your documentation. You still need your good relationship with the supplier, but then you need to monitor them. That might be with audits and inspection. So in, the, in today's framework, we're gonna talk a lot about the documentation in the, in the contract but I, I want to make you aware that by itself, it's not enough. You still need to build the relationship with the supplier. You still need to monitor that supplier to make sure that they're adhering to the contract terms. So I don't want to give the impression that simply having a good contract is all you need to protect yourself for quality and intellectual property. It's one part of, a, of three pieces of the puzzle that come together. All right, now we can officially start and uh, I hate it when I go to a, a presentation and the person tells how great they are and why you should buy from them. So the good news is today that I'm not going to tell you much about my company. I'll give you a little background on to why I was selected to come here and present, but you won't get a presentation. If you want to learn more about what I do, you know, or just leave a business card up here and I'll, I'll be happy to, to spam you for the rest of the, <laughs> the, rest of the year. Now I'll just send some, some basic information about the company. Also, if you want to take don't stress about taking notes. You know, feel free to take pictures, leave your business card up front, and I'll send you the slides. I'm video recording the whole thing. I'll put it on my YouTube channel within the week. So don't worry too much about taking notes. I'll be happy to share. Um, in exchange for, for giving all that free information, please, please, at the end, ask some questions. Um, the last group was very good at asking some questions and making me look good, because if uh, questions are asked, I have appeared to engage the audience and the organizers might invite me back next year. So your, your questions are warmly appreciated. Um, and let me get a show of hands. How many people attended one of my earlier presentations yesterday? Okay, and the rest of you are new. Good news is if, if you, today's presentation is designed to build on top of yesterday's presentation so there won't be a lot of overlap. The bad news for those that didn't attend is some of the um, fundamental issues we're going to skip over to get a little bit more advanced today. So if you want a refresher on those issues from yesterday, the basics, I think we did uh, nine tips for nine ways to avoid losing money in China. You can find that on my YouTube channel. So yesterday I started the presentation by explaining my don't hope rule, meaning if you leave the trade show and you think you found a good supplier in India that has the quality right and you're driving back home saying, I hope they, that Indian supplier understood my quality or I hope that Chinese manufacturer will knock off my idea. If you have to hope, you've already lost the battle because probably it's, um, it's not gonna work out. So I want you to leave today with the tools to say, I've got a great contract in place with my supplier. There's no way they don't understand my quality requirements. There's no way they don't understand that I want to protect my designs. So at the end of the 45 minutes today, you're, hopefully you won't have to hope. Uh, you know, I, I know in the marketing material that it presented me as an expert on China business and, and I, I, I kind of shudder when I see that because I've made so, mistakes, so many mistakes during my 20 years in Asia and one of the biggest mistakes that I made was um, letting my American lawyers prepare the contracts for my Chinese suppliers. And I remember I spent like a thousand dollars and I thought I had the most beautiful watertight contract and I gave it to the supplier, sent it to them via email PDF form. They signed it. I even had them FedEx the original copy under their corporate shop. I'm thinking here I am protected. A year later goes by and one of my terms was I don't want you doing business with these five competitors of mine. And I find out at a trade show, I walk into the trade show, see my supplier, and they're sitting down with one of my competitors negotiating a contract. And so then afterwards, I take the vendor aside and say, hey, this is on page 32, Article 7, you know, you, these are the five companies. And the supplier's like, Mike, I, I didn't read the contract. <laughs> and, and then it occurred to me that it wasn't in Chinese, that it was 40 pages long, 
and probably I wouldn't have read it if I was the supplier. I would have just put the chop on there and gotten the order. So, so often, it's not that the suppliers are trying to cheat us, it's that they didn't really understand your expectations. So if something is worth putting into a contract, it's also worth explaining in a very simple way to the suppliers why this point is in the contract. Um, and I'll explain how to do that. So a contract by itself is not going to align the interests of the two parties, the buyer and the seller. The contract is more like a memo of understanding that confirms that your interests are aligned from day one. I see a lot of friction. I'm on the board of advisors of a, of a law firm in China, and I see buyers and sellers suing each other all the time. And when I dig into it, the number one reason that things go wrong is that the two sides didn't realize they were going in different directions from, from day one. And no contract is going to fix that. You've got a supplier that eventually wants to have their own brand. You think that you're on an exclusive basis for Australia. A year later, your supplier has their brand competing against you in Australia. You, know, you, you think that that's totally uh, uh, uncalled for and outside of the contract. The supplier was planning to do it anyways from day one, didn't realize that would affect your business. So you, know, you really need to make sure that the interests, uh, the, that the roadmap is laid out and you guys are going in parallel rather than apart. Now here's some good news. 